Good afternoon friends, welcome to a, another video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my favourite, my ultimate favourite summer meals. So without further ado, we're going to get into the first one, which is a watercress soup. Before you say anything, it's actually delicious, so just wait. I also just want to say a quick thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video and always supporting my channel, but we'll talk about them a little bit later on. Okay, so we're going to start with this watercress soup. Before you think about it, it's actually really delicious and it's one of the simpler things to make. And one of the things I love about soups is that they are, they can be quite light. So with this one, we're just going to start with chopping up a couple of onions. If you have larger onions and you only need two, but I had some little ones, so I just cut up three to put in a saucepan. And then I'm just going to add some oil to the pan and I kind of ran out, but it was fine. And then add my onions to the pan to cook until translucent. And then I'm just adding in some small potatoes. I think I added in about four little ones, but you only need two big ones if you have them. And then I added them to the pan with the onions to get a little, get a little cooked up there and adding three garlic cloves but I only added these in about you know seven to ten minutes after I added the other stuff in because you don't want to cook the garlic too too much then I added in about 400 500 mils of vegetable stock and I let the potatoes cook, or everything to cook, until the potatoes were nice and soft. Once they were soft, I added in some very generous helpings of the watercress. Probably, maybe perhaps a bit too much, but I just really like to put in three generous bunches or helpings. But I just kind of added in a bit more because I just love the flavour, I love it to be nice and fresh. And of course we hydrated at the same time because it is warm weather and we want to keep hydrated, I guess. <laughs> and then we blend. And I just added a tablespoon of oat cream to the top, but of course you can add whatever cream you like, or just completely omit. So I've accidentally left the rocket to go a bit wild, so it's actually already flowered and it's gone to seed, which... Never mind. Um, and then also two of my courgette plants died. Two of them are doing really well. So I've replaced the courgette plants with um, just different ones just to try and see if they'll do any better. Uh, we've got an eight ball one, which is like a round, rounded one. We've got a, just a traditional green one, an ambassador one. Then I also decided to plant two different cucumber plants. So we've got a ridge cucumber, just a standard cucumber and then also a marrow and the marrow is going to be there for for months that's going to take ages um but yeah we'll see how they do and you can see just behind me my peas have gone wild they're all um all these flowers have started flowering which is really cool so it means that the peas are going to start growing soon and the potatoes are going wild so i'll be so excited i don't know why but i really love watching those videos which are of people like harvesting loads and loads of potatoes <laughs> Obviously mine's not going to be as big as that, but we've got four seed potatoes that I've grown. Uh, so we'll see how many we get with that, which will be exciting. Honestly, I'm just so excited. It's like digging for treasure. Um, but yeah, we've taken a break and we're going to get on to the next meal. For dinner, I'm going to make my second favourite summerish meal, which is a very light basil pesto uh, pasta with rocket and... 
cute baby courgettes, which are the cutest thing I think I've ever seen in my entire life. Lots of growers online say they're much nicer at this size because they're less watery, less seedy, and they taste better, more nutty and delicious, so I guess we'll find out. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna make that now. In the past couple of videos, I've showed you that I've been making sort of basil pesto, so I will share with you the kind of recipe that I use. It's really simple, it's really simple, simple, simple and I'm gonna go and get some basil. I just love using basil for my own garden and the rocket as well, it's just so exciting. So to get the basil pesto started, we're gonna start by toasting some pine nuts. I had some around, so I thought it was a perfect opportunity. Once they've cooled down a bit, then I add them to the pestle and mortar. Of course, if you don't have one, you can always just use a blender. And then I added in all my basil leaves. Sometimes I use scissors just to chop them up to make it a bit easier. Then I added two raw garlic cloves, the juice of half a lemon and a little bit of salt. And I started to mash it up. I really enjoy this process. I just find it so relaxing, but also quite fun to pound it out. And then I added in some olive oil, well, quite a lot of olive oil. Then we're just salting the water and adding in the pasta. Whenever I make something like this, because it's such a simple meal, I always try to get a fun pasta and whatever the shop has are packaged, I always, always try to get that. Now with the baby courgettes, I'm just gonna really simply fry them in a little bit of oil and add some salt. I want them to be as fresh and simple as possible just to add extra flavor. Once the pasta is cooled, then I'm gonna add it to a big bowl of rocket. Of course, I'm not eating this all. This is for my whole family. And then I'm gonna add in the basil pesto and mix everything together. It really is as simple as that. I'm gonna add this to the top just for presentation, but of course you don't need to do that. And then you just add them to the side and enjoy. It's one of my favorite things because I like to have it sort of warm or cold and it's so simple. I just want to take a small break to say thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform from which to create your website. You can connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content, manage your members and send email communications and leverage audience insights. I love creating a community over on Squarespace because I can use their fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies, and likes. So if you're interested, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash sustainably vegan to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay, what's the next one? This has got to be one of my absolute favorite meals because it is so simple and it's basically just collating a few of my absolute favorite things. So I'm gonna start off by baking some broccoli in the oven, just with some olive oil and some balsamic vinegar. I don't bake it for very long, maybe about five to seven minutes, especially if your oven is hot, you really don't need to have it in there for too long. And then I'm gonna be adding in some spring onions. I prefer to have the, the big ones to bake, but these ones will do. And I'm just slicing them in half, and then these will go in with the broccoli as well. In the meantime though, while the broccoli is cooking, I'm just gonna put the couscous in the bowl to, well, cook so it can cool down in time. And then into it, just to make it a little bit more interesting, I'm gonna add in some salt, and then I'm gonna add in the rind of half a lemon as well as the juice. Once you've added in the hot water, then you simply place some kind of lid or a bowl or whatever on top and leave it for about 10 minutes until the water is completely absorbed. So once the broccoli is done, I'm gonna add in my spring onions. I don't know why, I just absolutely love them baked. I, I saw this once when I made it and I've just loved it so much ever since. So I'm gonna put those back in, not for too much longer, maybe five minutes. And in the meantime, I'm gonna chop up all the herbs. This is one of my just favorite things because I love fresh herbs so, so, so much. So into the couscous, I'm gonna be adding some dill, some mint, some parsley, flat leaf parsley, and some chives. 
And honestly, the amount that you put in is completely up to you. I'm trying to make enough for a, a couple of meals or a couple of people. But yeah, once the couscous is ready, then you just sort of fluff it up. And then I wanted to wait till it cooled down before I added anything else. For a little extra crunch, I added in just a few walnuts that I chopped up. Now it's time for my favorite part, and that is to make the tahini dressing. This I decided again to make for a few days, so that's why I'm adding in so much tahini. But into there, I'm gonna add in the juice of a whole lemon, some salt, not too much, but it's completely up to you in terms of taste, and then just a splash of maple syrup to cut through the acidity. And give that a little mix. Once that's mixed in, you wanna add in some ice cold water. You wanna make sure it's ice cold because that makes the tahini nice and creamy. Once the couscous is cooled, I add in all of my delicious herbs and my walnuts. And then it's basically a game of adding stuff to a bowl. So I added in my couscous on top of a bed of rocket and then I put in all of my baked broccoli and spring onions. I had some baked tofu as well. It's just, it's just plain tofu, but if I wasn't gonna have a sauce, then I definitely would have added some kind of marinating, marination, Marin marinade, oh my goodness. And then I just added in some chopped cherry tomatoes, some watercress left over from the soup, and I also had some vine leaves, which I added in. And then of course, the tahini dressing. Hey friends, it is lunchtime, so I'm gonna make myself a, another one of my favorite sort of summer meals. And it's just something really simple that I like to have if I go hiking or if I go out or if I'm just really busy and I just wanna have something quick. I tend to make some wraps. And I used to be someone who was a massive fan of tuna mayonnaise sandwiches and wraps. Obviously I haven't eaten tuna for many, many years now. So instead what I like to do is have chickpeas um, and sort of mash it up and stuff like that. I'm sure you've seen this everywhere before. It's a good source of protein and it's just quite delicious in my opinion. Um, I forgot to make some mayonnaise because I just also couldn't be bothered. So when I don't make it myself, I will get it from Ruby's in the Rubble because they're a small local independent, you know, shop in the UK and they also help to contribute to fighting food waste. So that's really, really cool. Um, I also put a lot of random things in my sandwiches. So like, if you don't want to, that's fine. But because it is meant to be a kind of tuna-esque style thing, I'm gonna put some dill, and other herbs, chives, parsley, and then I'm also gonna put some red onion in there. That's a rogue move, some people think. And then some salad from the garden as well.
For the last meal of this video, I managed to get a little bit of help. A little bit of help from my boyfriend, who I haven't seen for nine months because of the pandemic. And luckily things managed to work out so that he could come for a visit. And this time we decided that we never wanted to be apart again. The first thing we're going to be making is his coleslaw, which we made with some of the fresh kale that I had in the garden. This is one of the things that we love to do together the most, is to make food together, inspire each other with different recipes, and just be, you know, cooking partners in crime. He's certainly more of a chef than I am, so it's been great to be able to learn how to cook over the past nine months while we've been apart. One of the best things about this coleslaw is that it is just super fresh. We've just got some kale, red cabbage, grated carrot, spring onion tops, some mayonnaise, white wine vinegar, and a generous helping of lemon. Oh, and of course some mustard. We both are a bit obsessed. And we're using some Beyond Meat Burgers. They just are, I think, our favorites. Now, it might come as a surprise to you. We're not the kind of marrying kind, I guess, is what you may say. But when you've been apart from someone for so long, it kind of makes you realize how important they are. And we just decided that it was right for us. We wanted to be together, we wanted to be together forever, and we wanted to make a real life for ourselves. And it just felt right. So it's, it's a bit of a joy, a bit of a joy, it's a lot of a joy to share our first proper meal together with the expectation that we're going to be spending the rest of our lives together. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please give it a thumbs up and I hope you enjoyed this, you know, low-key announcement, but yeah, I guess that's the biggest news that's happening in my life anytime soon. So thank you, and I'll see you guys very, very soon.